Hello, welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the WF4720, the Workforce Pro. So at the moment the printer is powered down and it's unplugged and the reason that it's unplugged is that you need to be able to freely move the print head when it's powered on, it, it gets locked into place. So I've already filled and primed the continuous ink system. Priming is removing the air from it. Now you should fill and prime it before installing into the printer. That's very important. Sometimes we get the odd customer that fills the system and then tries to head clean the ink down the line, which, which can ultimately break your printer. Uh, one of the other things we do get that happens is that they fill the system and then place it on the shelf above. Uh, and the ink just runs down the line but it will flood your printer if you do that so this should be on the same level so it must be filled and primed before installing and we have provided a separate instruction sheet which shows you how to do this so I have a, a stand here I'm just gonna the blue the blue wrapping on it you can remove it's just for display I'm just gonna pop that at the side it's quite a tall printer so we need to raise it slightly and the, the system will sit at the side of the printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to untangle the incline now rather than install it and find that it's tangled. Just get, just basically take out any twists or turns in it. Right, I'm going to install the ink cartridges into the printer. I'm going to click them in. So within your accessory pack you've got a few clips, this is the first, take the first one, remove the backing tape from it. And what we're going to do is we're going to affix it here, right in the middle, you'll see a little round plastic mould mark in here. And you're going to attach your clip on the inside. And what you need to do is you need to have your clip just flush or just slightly above. And the reason for that is that so that you can actually lock it and click it into place. If you put it too far down, lower than this, this edge here, you can't lock the clamp. So just slightly above the edge in this position here. So slide your print head all the way over to the left hand side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loop the incline round. But what you need to check is that it's a nice straight loop coming off. What you don't want to see is any of this where it will just flap around inside and it'll twist and snag. So just a nice straight loop coming straight off the incline or off the clip into your clamp and then close it, lock into place. Manually slide the head all the way over to the right and what you're looking for is that this is shouldn't be too tight, should be a little bit taut, just enough so it can reach the right and reach the left hand side. If it's too tight, the print head will give a print head warning error. It'll give an error code, which normally means that the print head is, is hitting something or jamming or it's got been restricted. I can't remember what the code is on this model. But basically, yeah, you need to make sure that it can freely move and it's not too tight and not too loose. Right, so I'm going to spin the printer around now because we need to just install a few more clamps but I just thought it'd be a better view if you had it round this side here. So within your accessory pack, you've still got your other clamp, so I'm going to remove the backing tape from that, and I'm going to attach it in this position here. I'm going to come down here again, and we're just going to lock it into place. You have some metal clamps which look like this, there's slight bend on them, that's been done by us, that's deliberate. Remove the backing from it. And put it underneath the, the incline. Now the, the reason for the bend is just to allow the, the lid to close a bit further down so that the gap is not so much. This helps with the scanner when you're using the scanner functionality of it. So just pull that through, get it nice. It's actually, I've put that in the wrong way. And then we're gonna put one round the other side over here where my finger is. So again, it's going to be in this area here Remove the green backing tape 
and pop it into this part here then we can spin it round but before I do actually let me move the camera I'm going to adjust the camera over into this area so we need to look at the, the lid sensor so this printer has a lid sensor I'm, I'm going to move the camera over now you can see this here that's where there's a lid sensor so what I'm going to do is we're going to fold a piece of ink line uh, a little four color piece of ink line fold it in half it be in your kit and then press down pop it into there you can see the little micro switch so that's my my incline folded in half and we're just going to pop it pop it in I'll show you so you can see there where I've put it so we're now going to pop this round and we can switch the printer on now now before I switch the printer on I'm going to remove the four small flat plugs from the top it's quite important because the system needs to be able to breathe. When you first switch it on, it's going to initialize and want to start pulling down the line. So remove the small flat plugs first. Power the printer on. Plug it back in. Now initially when you first switch it on it may say the ink cartridges aren't recognised. You may need to unclip them and clip them back in. That's perfectly normal. It's probably unlikely to do it for me because I've already installed this system in the printer before. So it's going to recognise that I'm using an aftermarket product. So it just says you need to do a nozzle check, which I will do anyway. Right, so we're done. They're recognised, no problems at all. Now, if yours are not, are not recognised, you need to remove the lid sensor plug. The printhead will come over, come over to the middle. You unclip the cartridges, clip them back in, and they will be recognised. Very rarely, you may need to repeat that process a couple of times. So I've just remembered something that I need to to show you and I need to get you to check I probably should have done this before but you do tend to do these off the cuff right so you can see this ledge here where my finger is here there's a ledge where the elbow joints go underneath here now at the moment it's it's quite raised at the moment the print head will actually drop itself down when it starts to print now what you should be checking is that the elbow joints there, so it's just dropped down while I've been using it. Well, while I've been doing it. So it drops up and down a little bit. So what you need to check is that your inclines, you have clearance, and it's not basically hitting the underside of that. Now remember, it, it may t rest on it at this point here, but when it starts to print, the print head is going to drop down, so you're going to have some clearance anyway. So I will try and show that again when I'm doing some prints, but you will need to to basically just check this whole area here and just make sure that it's not catching catching against it but remember at the moment it's parked so the print head is in the raised position so it may just look may look like it's touching but it's not Right, so we're done. So what I need to do now is we will have to do uh, some nozzle checks and head cleans just to, to check it's okay, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. 
So I've run a couple of head cleans and we now have we now have a perfect nozzle check. Now what I would recommend with these printers is that when you first fire it up and you will have to do two or three head cleans. Now if after two or three head cleans it's still no good. Uh, the, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't sit there and do head clean after head clean after head clean. That's the worst thing you could do. So we recommend that you do two or three head cleans. If it's still not quite right you go away have a cup of tea, coffee or something else and come back in an hour uh, and then repeat the process and it'll be fine after that. Now I'm going to do some prints but before we do we need to fit the air filters which is which are the little parts that are in your accessory bag. Now these have a narrow pointed end and a tall and a short stubby end. They should be inserted into the continuous ink system with the narrow pointed end facing upwards. So always one missing when I need one. There we are. There's a spare. Right, so can, air filters are fitted. Now we can run a couple of prints off. So as you can see, it's really straightforward to fit on this model. It'll probably take you 10 minutes to fill and prime it, and then maybe another 10 minutes to fit the system. So what I'll do is I'll do a couple of prints. I'll do some with the lid open and some with the lid closed. Okay, so I was just changing the paper type. I told it I'd got a different brand of paper in there. So that's how it how it works with the lid open. You're not going to use it with the lid open. Now one thing I have noticed is this clamp over here, I've put it on the wrong way around. It should be facing this way. I'm just gonna pop it off. Yeah. So the, the bent bit should be facing that way. And the reason for that is that we've put a bit of a bend on it so that the lid can close more so that when you open the scanner, it doesn't tilt back with the weight of the scanner lid doesn't tilt it back and you can still do that. So that's quite important, you know, that you have the, the bent clips up there and facing that way. Now I can't show, it's, uh, there's no point in me, I mentioned about showing you over here while it was moving, I said the print head drops down so you have plenty of clear. There's no point in me getting my camera around there because the print head is moving that quickly, you're not going to see anything. So just remember in its parked position, it will be virtually touching but when it prints, it's not going to print. It's not going to touch it and rub it because the print head drops down. So I've just said to do a couple of prints, but this, the next print, there's no point in me showing you. It's going to be exactly the same as this print. Right, so that is how you fit and install the continuous ink system from City Ink Express on the Workforce Pro WF4720. Thanks for watching.